All right, you guys. So last week we introduced you to our Rooted series. In it, we are confronting the discrimination so many black men and women face simply because of their natural hair. All across the country, a movement to ban this type of discrimination is growing, including right here in Texas. We uh, got one of our counterparts, Miss Ashley Godot, from our sister station out in Caveview, and she has the latest. Let's talk about hair. You've seen it worn down, half up, half down in a ponytail or bun, and chances are you don't think anything of it. But for so many of your friends, neighbors, and coworkers wearing their hair in the exact same styles, down, half up, half down in a ponytail or bun, is met with a dose of discrimination, all because the texture is different. Hair discrimination was put on full display in 2018. A referee told a high school wrestler in New Jersey he had to cut off his locks before a match or forfeit. Lawmakers across the country spoke out, and in 2019, California became the first state to pass the Creating a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair, or Crown Act. To put it plainly, the law states a person can't be denied employment and educational opportunities because of the texture of their hair hair or for wearing it in protective styles, including braids, locks and twists. As one state was passing policies to protect black hair, Texas was getting national attention for penalizing it. I was called down to the office every day. Last year, DeAndre Arnold was suspended from Barbers Hill High School outside of Houston and banned from walking the stage at his high school graduation because he wouldn't cut the locks he had been growing since he was 12 years old. Growing up around my dad's side of the family, they're from Trinidad and Tobago. This is something you see all the time. You see dreadlocks. And it's like me seeing that as a kid, it's like I really want to be a part of this. I want to emulate this and express this culture. One year later, the district's policy requiring the length of a male student's hair to be above the collar hasn't changed. It really is a shame that in 2020, that was last year or 2021. We still are dealing with this. State Representative Ron Reynolds met with DeAndre. And I applauded him for taking a stand, uh, for being willing to stand on principle. In February 2020, Reynolds and the members of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus vowed to fight hair discrimination the next time the legislature met. That time is now. Representatives Reynolds, Retta Bowers, and Sean Theory all filed versions of the Crown Act, a show of solidarity. To impose a European standard uh, of hairstyle on people of African descent is not equity. Representative Reynolds and Senator Boris Miles filed a bill in both chambers to ban discrimination against people who wear their hair in braids, locks, or twists in Texas schools and businesses. You should be judged on your merits and not how you wear your hair. Bauer's version of the bill goes one step further, ensuring people with natural hairstyles can't be discriminated against in housing. You should feel in school, in the workplace, and in where you live, you should feel comfortable to be yourself. Theory's version bans discrimination in businesses and schools and requires cultural awareness training for teachers. Without cultural competency, they really don't have an appreciation or awareness for what um, our hair means to us as African Americans. Three bills, one goal. Our goal is, is united to make sure that in Texas that we ban discrimination based upon uh, a hair. Lawmakers in seven states have passed the Crown Act. Now, Texas lawmakers have three months to get a bill on Governor Greg Abbott's desk. Ashley Goodell actually joining me now from Austin. And Ashley, thank you so much for being a part of this project. Um, it means the world that you were able to come on board and really just kind of lay it all out. And I do want to say real quickly, we do have some time. So tell me what exactly did you learn from legislators about the work that they are trying to do that we uh, didn't get to show in that piece? You know, they're very much dedicated to this cause and to passing this legislation in the state of Texas. And so some people may be questioning why there are three bills filed. Well, the plan is for Representative Ron Reynolds and some other members of the Legislative Black Caucus to sign on with Rep Bowers' bill because they feel like that housing piece really is important and really is something that they want to include. And hopefully they can move that legislation through, you know, the Capitol this session. Passing a bill in one session can be very hard to do. There are a lot of roadblocks, but I think there is a real appetite to get this piece of legislation passed amongst some members of the House and Senate. 
All right, Ashley, thank you so much. Look, if you didn't get enough of Ashley and I this morning, you can join us on Instagram Live at 1230, OK? 1230 Central Standard Time. Today, uh, we're going to have that conversation. I know it says February 18, but we're going to have that conversation today at 1230. You guys, we'll be right back after this break.